hi welcome back to my youtube live stream thank you guys so much for being in this live stream i haven't gone live in like two days so far but i'm so happy to be back to deliver you guys a beautiful message now this message has been lingering on my mind for a long time and this message is for everyone who's watching this but this message is also going to be directed towards myself included because each message that I make I give you guys personal experience and I also provide you guys with um you know walking the narrow path and doing the right thing and not distracting yourself with a bunch of distractions so the other video I did that was on um seducing spirits oh let me catch my breath sorry <laughs> So I did a video on seducing spirit and um, you know, I want to start by saying that I, when I, you know, was isolated and I had no support from friends or family, I got into, um, I really got into the tarot reading. I got into like astrology and you know, the, um, the crystals and stuff like that. And that sent me down a dark hole of hell because... I was trying to gain um, access into information on my family and if they were going to come back. And then some of the cards would say like, oh, someone's been thinking about you. Someone's been on your mind lately and this and that. And someone's going to come back. And so that always would mess up with my mind. And I was always thinking like, oh, I can't wait to go back into the tarot reading. I can't wait to just find out more information. And so I realized that it was making me feel good. It was just a lot of people who say that tarot card helps them. But when you're fully for Jesus, you're not going to disobey him. You're not going to fall into temptation and do something that it states in the Bible. It really says that, that we shouldn't use witchcraft because it's a form of witchcraft. It's a form of manipulation. And uh, a lot of people don't see that. They see they say that there's no harm in that. They see, they see it as something innocent. But that's what happens when you start seeing something as innocent. When you say, oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, um, it's not that bad. Or, um, oh, it's, nothing will happen. It's just tarot cards. And, but um, that you want to open that door, that portal, you're in it. For your soul, you're opening your, your portal, your vessel, for other different spirits to attach themselves to you. Because believe it or not, it's a form of spirituality. You don't know what kind of spirits other people carry. And when you go to that place and you get a reading and, um, you know, you ask for like, questions on your personal life and future life you're paying that person to do witchcraft or love spells those are another form of manipulation when people put love spells or curses or um hexes it, it, it seems innocent but it's not an innocent act because you're really opening yourself up to being attacked in the spiritual realm with spiritual attacks and um, I just want to warn you guys because I was once in that situation when I was into tarot cards and I was digging myself deeper and deeper into darkness and more darkness. And God saved me from all of that. I found out that that's the only truth that there is, that he's the only way. And that the reason why I was set apart and I was different was because God had chosen me. For a higher purpose not to be um messing with different spirits and you know getting into all the all the what do you call it like witchcraft type of stuff like crystals that like you carry a crystal and supposedly it's good luck and you carry a crystal for protection and you start to put that item above everything above even god or that certain demonic item it's a demonic item because when you go into those crystal shops when you go into those spiritual shops 
people put curses on um on the crystals on certain things and you take that home and then you wonder why your own home has a heavy demonic spirit in your own home you have to protect your own home so it's very good to even um anoint your home by doing prayers by removing things that have negative attachments negative memories and bad evil spirits on them and it's it seems innocent like oh it's just a crystal in my home but you don't know what type of energy it's carrying same with clothes same with presents that people give you like someone who it doesn't like you or someone who um has evil intentions bad intentions towards you has hidden motives they give you a present you take that home into your own home and um you know you start feeling like why is my home not i'm not peaceful in my own home and once you discover like it's because you have certain things that don't belong in your home i'm not sad i'm just being serious <laughs> i'm not sad i'm a, i'm in a great mood but um it just reminds me like there's a lot of things that i had in my closet and things that just were serving no good and i got started getting rid of it and trust me you start to feel light because god wants you to let go right of people of situations even of certain things that you have in your own home it's time to just remove them because it's it's baggage that you're carrying it's bad old negative energy sometimes we hoard things like oh well i don't want to let this thing go but yet you don't know like what type of energy it has every everything has um everything has like an interpretation that we place on certain items right in our home and some bring good memories others when we look at it we start to reminisce on you know times that weren't so good and we still have that item and yet we don't want to get rid of it because we're scared of detaching ourselves from that but maybe that is what's holding us um, stuck, like soul tied, connected to a person or because of that certain item that we have. And that person is no longer in our life. Maybe that person, both of you guys just had to go your separate ways, different destinies that you guys had to live and just different roads, right? And um, you still have that certain thing in your home. And every time you look at it, you start to remember, oh, I remember that person. I remember what they did. And you start to have like negative thoughts in your mind. And those negative thoughts, that invites Satan to get into your mind. And that's a spiritual attack ha happening in your own home because of that memory that's associated with it. And you start going into negative thinking. And God wants you to be at peace. God wants you to have a sound mind, right? And to be happy. And to not be thinking negative. So it's very helpful to remove certain things that we have to cleanse and to anoint our home. So that's a little message that I want to share with you guys. And I hope it helped. I hope I can like interpret I interpret it. I explained it in a way that's understandable. Because sometimes I even try to make sense of it, too. I'm just like, I have certain things, and I'm, I'm like, trying to, like, think, no, I re but I really want it, but no, but this. And then once I let it go, I start feeling better. I'm like, oh, I, I feel so good that I did that. I feel, like, so much relief. Like, I feel like a weight has been lifted off of my, my soul. Because, yeah, I don't know if that happens to you guys, if you guys can relate to what I'm saying. But I've done that where I've gotten rid of a lot of things that I had. And once I was done, I just I felt so much peace. Like, that felt good. And you're inviting God into your life, too, by removing that. Because you give the right. You give the right to for evil to enter your home. When you have certain things in your home. When you place certain value on things in your home. You, you give the right and you give authority to evil to enter your home. So when you remove it, 
you make space for God to bless your home. And it's a peaceful home. You go in there and it's your it's your space of just pure serenity. Like I don't know how to explain it, but your house should be a place where you feel safe, where you feel welcome, where you feel at at peace. And I really hope this message helped because God wants you to um, make room for him. He, he's, he's a selfish God. God wants you to prioritize him. Don't prioritize things that you have in your home. Don't prioritize things that serve you no good anymore. Put God above everything. Always. So... I hope this helped and I hope you guys can think of certain things that you guys think that you guys should just get rid of. And maybe that's going to help you guys too with the spiritual attacks, with um, removing certain energy that doesn't belong in your life. I really hope this helped. And with that being said... I forgot what title I put for this video. <laughs> I forgot the title that I put for this video, but um, I think I put God wants you to let go of people. And that also goes for people, right? So we have to reevaluate every person in our life, right? Um, it's not selfish to take care of yourself. God wants you to love yourself. He made you in his image. He made you with so much love. And he wants the best for you. So I'm going to start talking about this. So you need to reevaluate re each and every single relationship that you have in your life. Reevaluate the people that you are around. Um, because are they, are they adding value, any type of value into your life? Are those people that you have around, do they add value? Or are they taking away value? Are they bringing you down, bringing negativity into your life. And um, we have to really think about that because, trust me, this year has been a rough year for many of us. A lot of spiritual warfare, a lot of spiritual attacks. A lot of God opened our eyes. Like, he opened our eyes so much and he opened their eyes too because they were blinded by who we were they wanted to be in denial and the truth hit a lot of people and it hit us too because we were in denial as well we have to take accountability we were at once in denial about people because you know people are good at pretending people are wow people are masters that's what they live to do to pretend to like you, pretend to love you, they smile at your face, they greet you, they ask how you're doing, and the whole time, they really don't care, and they're really the opposite of what they appear to be, because of their spirit, right? We see the physical um, realm of people, their smiles, their, you know, their energy, but we, we don't test the spirit, and that's what gets us, in. that's what gets us and so much um, pain. False persons, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, wow. I, one day I'm going to share. I mean, you guys all have testimonies as well. You guys, if you guys are here in this moment, that means you guys have made it through your situation. You made it through all that was, that was supposed to take you out, that, that was supposed to keep you down. So, this is... This is a very serious topic. And um, it's necessary. It's necessary because it's a privilege and it's an honor for people to be in your life. You're not a regular person. And this is not to be like, oh, you think you're better than other people. No, you're not a regular person. The reason why so many people came up against you, the reason why so many people attacked you, the reason why so many people infiltrated your own life and harassed you and tried to torment you and put you down was because of your purpose, of why you are sent here on earth. You have a very, 
very prestige, a uh, huge purpose on this earth. It's not the ordinary. And that's why so many people were worried and overly obsessed and concerned with your life. And I, I get tired when people say, oh, you, you have to be humble. We've been a chosen ones, followers of of Christ, worry we are very humble human beings. We're humble, but we also have to know that our power requires more responsibility. And we can't be giving away our power to just anyone and everyone and the whole entire people that that feel entitled, that feel like they deserve something, like we owe them something. And that we have to break ourselves down for other people to like us or to accept us. We no longer have to do that. We've had that most of our life, all our life, where we've gone through so much trials and tribulation, error and lessons and lessons and lessons and lessons, right? So we don't need to relearn so many lessons over and over again. God already told us, he showed us, he revealed to us everything that we need to know. So now we can move towards the right path. Don't move backwards. Don't be a dog that goes back to its own vomit. And lots of people say that in the YouTube videos, but it's very true, you know. Um, you know, someone who, who is jealous of you, someone who, um, a hater, you know, haters, um, just people with hate in their hearts. You can't be around those type of people anymore. You just can't. You can't afford that anymore. You paid the price, you guys. Most of you guys paid the price and you guys even added tax for everything that you've ever been through. You don't need to lower your value, lower the price for people to be in your life. Now what you need to do is you need to maintain that high price, how strong you are, how resilient you are, how worthy you are, and how much of a beautiful thing it is for people to be in your life. And now they have to pay the price because they left you. They most most of the people left you at your lowest point. They left when you needed someone to be there. You were begging them. You wanted them to remain in your life. You were trying your hardest to please them to make them happy, to make them see who you are, and they didn't want to even give you the opportunity to really know the real you. Instead, they misjudged you, they um, backstabbed you, they were two-faced, they were um, only coming around to see if whatever that they did was actually hurting you and harming you in a way. You know, I have family that do witchcraft, and I'm more than certain that you know, witchcraft was performed on me by my family. And they they come in and out of your life. You can't have that anymore. You can't have that inconsistency. Someone who's not sure about you. Someone who's confused about you. You have to have someone who is, is fully able to see your value and treat you with honor, with respect with the same love and care that you demonstrate to them. Because, because you already gone through a lot, so um, we don't need to, to go through all that that we went through all over again. But what I need you guys to always keep in mind is to let them go. Um, really, let them go. Let these people go. They already revealed to you who they are. They revealed to you how they feel about you. By the way that they treated you. By the way that they made you feel about yourself. By the way that they, you know, didn't want to give you the respect that you deserve. That you fully deserve because you were respectful of them. And they couldn't even give you any of that in return. 
they would give you breadcrumbs always, little tiny crumbs here and there, just to keep, to manipulate you, to deceive you, to keep you on a string, so they can toy with your emotions and your heart. No, you're, you do not deserve to be an op no one's option. You deserve to be someone's priority. We have to let go of those people that think that we're an option, that they can use us whenever it's beneficial for them to be in our lives. And when it's not, they leave and they run away because it gets too hard for them. Um, I went through a lot on my own, on my own. I didn't have family support. I didn't have friend support. And, um, you know, now that they see you doing good, now that they see you now that they see you happier, now that they see you actually um, recognizing your power, now they try to come back, reappear in your life as if nothing ever happened, as if everything can go back to how it used to be. Nothing will ever be the same ever again. It's like when someone shatters you or someone does something so foul to you and disheartening, you can't see them in the same way that you would see them. Like, I still forgive each and every single one of them because I love humans and I stand for humanity fully. And I know that they're messed up people. That they're broken people. We all are a little bit broken. But it still doesn't give them a justification, an excuse. It doesn't um, mean that what they did was okay. It's never okay to do that type of... That type of... Um, mistreatment abuse that type of torture and harassment onto onto another person that is never okay and they're too prideful they're too arrogant they're too jealous to ever come towards you and apologize for what they did to you and that's the thing about your enemies is that they'll never expose themselves they'll never reveal to you who they really are everything that they've done they do it in the dark so you need to barely discern the spirits because there's going to be a lot of people who are going to treat you nice but in reality they don't really like you they don't love you but they're going to act like it because they see that your breakthrough is so near they know that your breakthrough is so near they know who you are they know who you are so you don't have to prove it to anyone you don't have to try so hard anymore people already see you for who you are and we're done with that we're not doing people pleasing anymore. We we've recognized that we had certain accountability responsibilities in the and what what part we played in the role in their life as well. Because a lot of people were using our weaknesses against us. This is so sad to see, but they were using our good qualities, our beautiful qualities against us for evil. You know how evil that is when people do that to you? When you're kind, when you're loving, when you're respectful. When you care about them and they use all that against you to put you down, that's that's the demon coming out of them. It's not the person. I'm starting to realize that it's not the person anymore that, that's doing that to them. It's that spirit that they carry. They have a certain demonic attachment in them. So I don't get mad at the person because I know that they're they're struggling that they have a demonic hold oppression suppression on them and they're weak vessels and that's why they attack us but we're the strong vessels and when we give them our energy that gives them the power to use that energy that we give them and use it for evil so that's why we have to very much be aware of um our power, we're powerful. We're so powerful, we don't even notice that. Yes, they treat us like property when we're not. No, that's the type of mentality that they have because they see how abundant you are. They see how blessed you are. They see how much God blesses you in your soul. And so what happens is that they think that they can freeload. That they can have access to you whenever they want to. But no, they're not entitled to our light. No, even if they get mad, even if they throw a temper tantrum, 
even if they guilt trip us and make it feel that we're a bad person because weak vessels do that first they attack us with intimidation tactics then they attack us with um slander negative gossip betrayal um harassment trying to provoke you to get an emotional reaction out of you to feed off of your energy now our our spirit is too it's too expensive we have a soul we have the holy ghost so that's something that that you have to protect you really do mm -hmm. why do you think that in the bible it says to put on the whole armor of of god because if you don't your soul is on the line our soul has been on the line throughout this whole spiritual warfare it's it's always been a battle over your soul nothing else that's it it's just your soul <laughs> but here's the thing we're eagles we can't be flying low anymore you know we can't be flying low anymore we have to fly high because below us there's pigeons and they're pigeons and we're eagles and so we can't stoop down like that anymore to help them now they have to do the work you know it was no it's not our job to do the inner work the healing for other people they have to to um to realize stop living in the now they fear they fear themselves they don't they that's the reality when they go low we go high mm -hmm. there was a um a short video that snoop dogg <laughs> he talked about he said that how can i explain it this is what he said look this is a good example so he said you're gonna be okay so you, once you and your friends, right? It's too bright. Hold on. Okay, so you and your friends are like this, right? You, both of you guys, people in your life. Once you, once you guys were like this. But as soon as you started to grow a little bit more, you're starting to go like this, right? And you're rising higher and higher and higher and higher. So what are you going to do until this point? You're already really high. Are you going to go like this and lower yourself down to meet them? Or are you going to wait until they close the gap and they meet you where you're at, right? So what I always want you guys to remember is to stay in your power. Shine that beautiful light. Don't dim it. Don't be less of yourself. Just do this. Because the reason why God has you up here is because he wants you to help a lot of people. Not just a few. A lot, right? But the right type of people. Because sometimes sometimes the weight is too heavy for you to carry on your own and to deal with. You can't. It's impossible. And so... But when you realize something is that when you're up here, they can't attack you. They really can't. When you're happy, when you're just in a, having a good time, they really can't attack you because you're all the way up here. So they flee. They scatter. They run away. And something beautiful that happened this year too is that God revealed to you who they are. And um, God also revealed to you who you are. Because if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't tap into that power, that inner power, that inner um, anointing of yours. 
that you never, you never like really ex fully expressed it out. And this, that's why you have to let them go too, because you already know who they are, right? You know that they don't really love you. They don't like you. They're just fake. They're only in it for themselves. That's the sad thing that there's so much selfish, greedy people. They're jealous, greedy, and um, bitter. And one thing I find is that they don't like us, right? But they can't get enough of us. They really can't get enough of us. They, they really don't, they don't like us, but they can't stop keeping up with us. They can't stop knowing what we have going on in our life. It's like they wasted so much of their time worrying and stressing about us and trying to dim our light and trying to hurt us and dig a grave for us to fall into. And they ended up being the ones that fell into that same trap that they tried to put us through. And I'm saying this honest, honestly. They really fell into the same traps that they tried to put us through. And now they're going through it. The devil is punishing them. God is punishing them too, but God vindicated you. And so you have to thank God every day. And you have to learn to let those people go. Because if he already set you free, why are you going to go back again? And go through the fire all over again. You're already the diamond. You've been the diamond. You don't need to go back through that fire again. And I want you to look at yourself and I want you to remember who you are. Not who the world, not who these negative, weak-spirited people tell you who you are. I want you to know who you are and who God says you are. But I really need to say that um, it was a year this year. You know, so many people that I thought that were kind and I was genuine to them. Um, I care a lot about people, but they were fake the whole time. They switched up. They turned their back. As soon as they sold, they sold us for money. They sold us for money. Not knowing that money is, is of the devil. The power of money. But, wow. Just think about it. I mean, they sold us for money. They sold us for status. They sold us out for um, popularity. They sold us out for um, making us the joke. But yet, they're still not happy because it wasn't the answer. And I'm going to tell you, some of, some of these people are not right right here. They're really not right in the head. I've noticed that some of them are really not okay. They're just not in the right head space. Because for them to do certain things like that, they have to, something has to be going on. No one in their clear mind would ever think twice about crossing someone who didn't even do anything to deserve it and who didn't even do anything to even be treated that way. Wow. Wow. You didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve everything that these people did to you. And you didn't deserve none of that. And they try to make you feel like you deserved all that. You did not. 
Why? Because they were so selfish that they didn't want you to leave them behind. They wanted you to be the same person that you all, that you once were. But you changed now. You're not the same person. You're really not the same person anymore. And that's why you can't go back. Because that pain and that suffering and everything, it was for your higher good. It's for your higher good. You didn't go through that just for nothing. There's purpose in that. There's testimony in everything you went through. And you need to be strong enough to be a light, a beacon for a lot of other people. But I see some of them, and they can't even look me in the eyes. They look down on the floor, and I know why. It's because it eats them alive knowing that they really tried to make a real person look bad. That is not smart. How can you ever lie on someone that's real? When they really are who they are and they're not wearing a mask and they're not wearing a facade and they're not being fake and phony how can they lie on someone that's real and someone that is true to who they are and fully fully able to be true to themselves and that just that just really gets me thinking like they really thought they were going to get away with this. But this year, so many of them got exposed. And I mean that. So many of them got exposed. I don't know if you guys have the same situation as, as me, but a lot of people are put in their place during this time right now. Lots of people. That whole gang stalking. Other people were watching them doing what they were doing to us. People who stayed quiet, but they didn't speak up, but they were on our side and they actually admired us and looked up to us. They were aware of what people were doing onto us because we're God's chosen ones. You do not mess with God's chosen ones. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. And they thought that they were going to be able to to mess with the fire in you. But they got burned. And what happened? That burn turned into the exposure of them. Wow. So I need you to let them go. I need you to finally be at peace with yourself. I don't want you to feel like you did something wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. You were kind-hearted. You, you are a good-hearted person. And they try to paint you out as a villain. They wanted you to see yourself as a villain. As a bad person. Because they wanted to try to justify. And try to deny who you were. So they can look better than you. And so they can make themselves feel like they were above you. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. All the wicked things they've done will be exposed. The fire in you is the Holy Spirit. It's what shines so bright. Like bright. You know. And that's what I'm referring to. The darkness, it's just dark, right? And people do evil things in the dark. You really can't see it. Yes, they thought that... No, they actually thought that um, they needed us, but that's why they needed to trauma bond us. That's why they needed to manipulate and deceive us. 
because they were thinking about what can this chosen one do for me? What can I get out of this chosen one who's so kind and so nice? What can I possibly get out of them and take advantage of them and just be nice to them, just say a couple of nice things to them and then they'll just give in to whatever I want and they'll do what I want. But now that you see them for who they are, you're just like, no, I'm good. I pass. Thank you so much, but no thank you. And you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. You, There's nothing wrong with that. And you gave them chance after chance. It's not like you didn't try, right? It's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, it's like, okay, now, now you really, you really need to see exactly that this is on you you have to hold yourself accountable because you're allowing them to play you you're allowing them to manipulate you're allowing them to deceive you you're allowing them to think that it's okay that they can get away with whatever they do to you and you'll just be fine that you can just be nice to them while they're being mean to you no no it should be reciprocity we're not in times anymore you should be getting a more energy back than what you receive because if not that's going to drain you right um if someone doesn't offer you as much energy as you have, and instead they offer you less, it's going to drain you. It really is. So, they played themselves so hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, you know, then they try to come back, they try to act like, like nothing ever happened. They gaslight you. They <laughs> they gaslight us. Oh wow. They gaslight us and act like they were never part of anything. That they didn't know what was happening. Whole time they were a part of the part of it. So you need to start seeing people for who they are now. See them clearly. See them very clearly. Don't wear your rose colored glasses of love that you love, right? I need you to see them for who they are and know that you deserve so much better. Also, if you have too limited access to your life, take control of your life. Mm hmm. So yeah, make sure you reevaluate your relationships, who you allow into your life. Because remember, the people that you keep around actually start to influence you, either for good or bad. And um, make sure they add value into your life. Just as you add value, they need to add some sort of value into your life. To be in your life, right? And um, don't keep people who keep taking away value out of your life. They take away your happiness. They take away your peace. They take away your self-love. They make you think that you're not good enough. They try to make you feel like there's something wrong with you. No, get rid of those type of people. And, um, you know, don't be around small people because you're not going to be able to be your, your powerful self around them. Because they're going to want you to conform to them. So I need you to start... Start getting rid of, you know, people that that really don't belong in your life. Delete their phone numbers. Go through your phone. Check each phone number. And actually reevaluate that relationship. Reevaluate, how does this person make me feel? Um, what, how, how is this relationship, is it adding value or taking away? And reevaluate the, the number of contacts, you know, the people's contacts. And it's time to start deleting certain people out of your life. And this is not bad. This is nothing. No. It's necessary. And um, you're not an option. You're never an option. I'm sorry if anyone made you feel that way, but... 
but you do you, you don't deserve that in fact dump them all <laughs> yeah but no don't let them guilt you um no you have to hold them accountable you expose them for what they did to you um and you ask like what makes you think that you can come back into my life after blah 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 and this and that what makes you think that that you deserve to reap my blessings all of a sudden when you were part of trying to destroy and derail me and keep me stuck and keep me keep me from ever um going where I, god was taking me to So, mm hmm Oh yes, they project us. They project onto us. No more of that, uh-uh. No. Even, they wanted us to get away from their life. They weren't making, they weren't making any time for us. They were tolerating us. They didn't even like us. And so now that we got out of their life, we did exactly what they wanted us to do, right? Now, they're, they're not happy, they're mad. That's what they've always wanted. They've always wanted us to get out of their life, so that's what we did. And now, now what's the, pl what's the game? So. But jealousy is a disease. Jealousy, I tell you. And you can't fix it. You can't fix their jealousy. You really can't. And the thing I don't understand about jealous people is that they still want you around. Jealous people are like, they're, they're sick. They still want to be a part of your life at the same time that they're jealous of you. And I've never understood that about jealous people. I always ask that question like, why are they jealous, but yet they still want to keep up with you? They still want to compete with you. They still want to try to be a part of your life. When the whole time they have um, bad energy towards us. I mean, jealousy is sick. It's sick. It is sick. They want to take it away. Mm-hmm. Jealousy is hate, yes. To steal your style, they want to see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. They tried to kill me multiple times, but fall. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Telling you, it's no joke. Jealousy is not something to take lightly. Some people are like, oh, it's okay, it's just jealousy. No, no, no. Some they can turn into hate very quickly. There's a thin line. And there's a thin line between love and hate too. And that's where you get your haters. They love you but they hate you. <laughs> so they even tried to move me out of my place that I live and I said no you know I didn't do anything wrong I don't have to run away I don't but it's just they can't take it anymore you know they can't take the fact that they tried to make me out to be that I was crazy that, that I was such a bad horrible person and the whole time the truth finally came into the light and people start to see who's really who People start to see who's really who. If you really are who you say you are, right? People will start to take notice and see, wait a minute, they're not, they're not that way, they're not this way, no. 
and they start actually seeing through the 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 lies that people try to paint you out to be this way and that's when the truth comes out but that's why God wants you to stay still sometimes so everything can fall into its place that's why you can't just think with your emotions and make choices based off your emotions you have to think with you know with the spirit of discernment and the spirit of faith to know what God really intends for you before you do something, right? And the crazy part is that, you know, they betrayed you thinking that they were going to be more blessed than you by betraying you. Whole time you were the blueprint. Whole time you were the answer that they were looking for. But they betrayed you thinking that that God was going to bless them even more by going up against you. How does that work? And they can't say that God didn't warn them. Because they were warned before they did what they did. God warned each one of them. Told them, are you sure you want to go up against this person? And you know, they didn't appreciate your presence. And now it's time for you to just move on. Because... Exactly, the best revenge is to outgrow and move on. Leave them in the garbage they tried throwing you. And thank you, that's a beautiful way to put it. Wow. I'm going to read that again. The best revenge is to outgrow and move on. Leave them in the garbage that they tried throwing you in. Thank you, that's, that's very true. It's competition that they live for. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's funny, always comparing you helps them, they never want to help you, they feel inferior the whole time. Oh yeah, it's their pride, that's why they don't want to help, because they're very prideful. Yes, thank you, Samuel. Very true. But this message is just as a reminder to, um, you know, to start a new chapter. But with that new chapter, you're going to have to turn the page, right, on certain people in your life and leave them in that chapter that was, that was a difficult chapter in your life and move on to the next chapter and don't go back don't reread that page over again use it to as fuel to continue to um to prosper to elevate and to remind yourself how how powerful you are strong you are You've always been strong. That's why you're one of God's strongest soldiers. Mm hmm Yes, you are. He knew that you were going to be able to get through this, so. Don't ever doubt. The power of faith.
Never going back, only moving forward. Mm hmm. Exactly, yes. They're very shocked that we continued to rise. I mean, they gave us dirt and we turned it into gold. And that is a miracle. That's a miracle from the Most High. The Most High God. Because that's a testimony. That's, that's something in the supernatural. That is something in the supernatural. Your spirit is like, you have supernatural abilities to go through all of that that you went through. And you were in that dark place just trying to get out. And look at you now. You're strong. Like, I don't know how to, else to say it, but the things that targeted individuals, chosen ones go through. Wow. It is... It is intense, intense, intense spiritual warfare. It's not just, it's not just a little tiny, um, difficult jump that you have to do. It's a whole entire storm that they wanted to keep you, and they want to keep you outside in the storm, just standing there in the storm. And you overcame that. God got you out and he cleaned, he, he cleaned you, he cleaned you, he dried you up. And he's, he said, trust me, I'm going, I'm going to be the one who will say who you are. And I'm going to make sure that they see you for who you are. And that day will arrive. And it has arrived. It has arrived. Wow. People know who you are without even saying a word. They see it. They see that anointing all over you. They see your beautiful light. That's why they stare at you. That's why they turn to look at you all the time when you're out in public. That's why you get a lot of people just randomly just staring at you like, like that because they are mesmerized. They are fully in love or some people are jealous or some you know different energies but some people wow they they admire your your beautiful light they admire you you have people talking about you you're you're the the topic of a lot of people you really are you have the people who negatively want to talk bad about you but don't even worry about them don't worry about what they say it doesn't matter they hold no authority and no say in your life. They can say whatever they want to say. That's that's them speaking about their own misery. But you also have a group of people who admire you and who are just looking up to you at everything that you went through. And you still have a beautiful heart, a soul, and you still have the ability to smile each and every single day that you get up. And they know that you are exactly from God. Chosen. You are chosen. They know this. They see it all over you. And everything that she went through, I don't want it to ever change you. Don't change yourself. Continue to have that beautiful soul of yours. Don't let what they did to you change the way that you view yourself. Because that sometimes can happen to us when we're like thinking to ourselves, Why? Why did so many people go against me? What did I do to deserve this? You didn't do anything that's just God revealing to you how powerful and divine you are 
The devil wouldn't be attacking you so hard if there wasn't something extremely valuable there to begin with. That light of yours is powerful. It's intense. It's so vibrant that you attract all different types of spirits in your life. You attract moths. You attract spiders and all this type of other things in, on your light. But that's why it's necessary to make sure that you keep your light clean and, sh and make sure that you remove certain things out of your light so it could shine, right? Because the more, the more negativity that you keep in there, the more it's going to just hide that light and it's going to try to it's gonna do this to your light, watch. And the more negative people, right? Look at the light. It's gonna do this to your light. You see? So you have to keep good, positive people. People who believe in you, people who admire you and love you. But the more you keep moths, the more it's gonna just do that to your light. So I need you guys to really be aware of who you allow. Okay? Ask yourself, what's covering my light? Let it be released. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can still love our enemies. We can love our enemies from a distance. We can wish the best for them, wish that they heal themselves, wish that they find God. Pray for them, really pray for them, but truly pray for them because they're lost. They're lost. They're lost people who have no way of finding purpose. And so their only purpose was trying to intervene and get in the way of your purpose when they need to be worried about what God has for them. We all have a purpose. We all have a purpose on this earth. We really do. But everyone has the free will to choose a purpose of, for good or for evil. But don't ever do anything bad, evil, onto your enemies. Don't. It's not worth it. Yes, you can have righteous anger. Yes, you're allowed to feel that anger. You're allowed to, to weep. You're allowed to feel your emotions. It's, that's, there's no wrong in that. You're allowed to have righteous anger. You're allowed to feel angry at what those people did to you. I don't want you guys to ever think that, oh, it's so wrong to feel angry. This is bad. It's a sin. It's righteous anger. You think God was happy when those people were doing that to you? You think God was God was heartbroken because he, he, it's, you were, you were meant to be in those people's lives to bless them. And the whole entire time they wanted to curse you. But it's time to move on because they, some of them don't really care. They don't care at all. Their hearts are not in the right place. And that's what it is.
We should all be at a certain level of discernment by now. Time to enjoy the fruits of our label. Of our labor. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. God doesn't just give away rewards. We have to earn it. Mm -hmm. Yes, very well said. That's the best thing you can do is just move on. Just move on. Um... Do it because God wants you to as well. God wants you to let certain people go out of your life. He really does. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Worse than not caring, I experienced some more pure hatred. Just amazing. Oh, yeah. Just know that it, it it's not you. It's what they harbor, what they carry, right? It's not you. And don't ever think it's you. Repent, people. Yes, thank you. And, um, you know, things will never be able to go back to how they once were as well. <laughs> you tell me, before all that spiritual warfare that you went through, are you the same person that you are now? All that was not supposed to... It didn't break you. <laughs> it made you... It made you... Wow, I don't know how to describe it, but... I just... I've been thinking about it. It's been on my mind so much. And I wanted... I want the right words, but I just can't think of it. But you're not the same person anymore. You're really not. Like, you see life... It's like... I don't understand, but... Uh, it's like you see... You appreciate life. You value life so much more because of everything that you've gone through you realize how precious life is you really do but you know you you become different um there's a oh, again I'm not, i don't have my laptop right now but there's a verse that says that although we can be crushed right we can be crushed what's that what's that verse i need to find it you guys but it's very true. I wish I can find it. I hope someone knows it. <laughs> so y'all can just, you know, type it if you guys know what I'm talking about. It says, although we may be crushed, although we may be, um, you know, we still... I'm gonna try to look for it. But now what you guys need to do is um, the righteous of the law might n is not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, let me try to find that verse that I'm looking for. I can do all things perplex but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed 
We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. 2 Corinthians 4, 8. So I'm going to read that again. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. 2 Corinthians 4.8 Okay, so that is exactly what I mean by um, everything that we've gone, gone through. And not only that, but, um, you know, just getting getting rid of the, the dead weight. That, that's it. Get, get rid of the dead weight in your life, okay? It's dead weight that you've been carrying around. That doesn't even belong to you. Okay? And it doesn't belong to you. Give it to God. Surrender to God. Um, hand God your problems. So out with the old, in with the new. Out with the old, in with the new now. I've been singing this. You look like an angel. Certain people. You walk like an angel. You talk like an angel. But I got wise. You're the devil in disguise. Oh, yes, you are. Devil in disguise. Mm -hmm. I held on for far too long. And many will misunderstand you, and that's okay, but um, you're not meant to be. You're not for everyone. That's another thing. You're really not for everyone, chosen ones. We're not for everyone. And, you know, we need to stop trying to be for everyone. That's another thing that we need to start paying attention, is that we're definitely not for everyone. Too many jealous and envious spirits around. It's very important to test the spirit by its fruit. Mm -hmm.
There's attention seekers. That's another thing, you guys. Um, you know, the people that you have to let go of your life. They're also energy zappers, energy vampires. Or what can you call them? Low, 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 low vessels, weak vessels. Um, they just want attention, you know, most of the time. So you're going to waste your time, too. And that's a waste of time with people who just want to um, keep you around just for their own ego boost to make to make themselves feel good or just to get your attention because they're just attention seeking seekers um, they want a little bit of a little bit of your your energy so very attention seeking behavior. Be separate and give all your purpose to God. So, so yeah, these people love to play games. They don't take life seriously. They, um, they're attention seekers. They're immature. They see life as a game. And they have a lot to learn about. Reality, reality, not, not some type of um, make-believe world that they live in. And um, what do you call it? So I just want to say that it's just time to move on and leave the past in the past. Leave them where they tried to leave you. Leave them where they tried to leave you at. And just move on, elevate, and um, just keep doing what you're called to do. And I also wanna talk about, um, don't waste your time, don't waste your energy, don't waste none of that on nonsense. Um, there's no more fixing anything. It's too late for these people now. Um, it's like an airplane, right? They didn't they didn't put in the work to, to earn a ticket to fly with you. Then they just can't go on the plane with you because they don't have enough money to pay for the ticket. They didn't do what they had to do to earn a place in your life. And sorry... You know, the plane's going to take off and you leave them where they're at. And that's a good example, I hope. But we need to forgive those people who try to put us in their situation or in worse situations.
It's lonely at the top. Mm -hmm. It is lonely at the top. Yes, it is. It's very... Release everything that keeps you from ascending. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, release anything also that keeps you confused, that keeps you unbalanced, and keeps you unstable. Mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, everything. Anything that keeps you confused and keeps you your yourself unbalanced and unsure. Um that's already a sign that God did not send you that person into your life. And I don't know how, but it just makes sense. Anything that's like that, just, I don't think it was sent by God. Because God is, God is not the spirit of confusion, right? And God is not the spirit of lies and deception. So, I don't think that is meant to be in your life. If it brings you confusion. If you're constantly doubting yourself and constantly making excuses and you know excuses for the person that's causing that confusion in your life and you're trying to make sense and you, you have to put information so it can make sense to you and you start overthinking and you start ruminating on their behavior and then you start filling in the, the spaces with whatever you think is right or where you stand in that person's life. We're not doing that anymore. Where you're constantly confused. Well, they're nice to me that day. But then they act like they don't care the other day. So, I think they do like me. That's, that's mind games. That's mind games. That's manipulation. That's someone deceiving you. That's someone disrespecting you. They're not respecting you. Because someone that respects you will never, will never play that type of game with you. And, and keep you wondering. And keep you in a state of of not knowing where that relationship is leading towards. It's leading towards destruction. It's leading towards nowhere. You're just going to be in that same cycle over and over again. So, release them. Let them go. You're going to keep going in that same cycle. One, two, three. Like that. Until you finally leave, you're going to be able to get out and go... Psh, and leave you know but if you still have that person you're gonna just go like this and once you leave you're going you're out so that's a good way to put it um so yeah god cleaned you up he got all that dirt off of you that they tried to throw dirt on your name and you know tried to throw your name in the mud god cleaned it all up looking all sparkly and shiny again he vindicated you. He vindicated you. Okay? And, you know, although they're going to act innocent in your life, they might come back and say that, I didn't mean it. I didn't know what I was doing. That's not how it happened. No. They were not confused. They knew exactly what they were doing. When someone lies, they have to add a little bit of this, a little bit of that to make it sound like the truth. They have to gain a little bit of information about you, twist it around, add a little bit of, of okay, well, this sounds like it's true. And, oh, what happens if we add a little bit of this? They have to make a lie sound like the truth. They're not confused. That takes time. That takes type of effort to make something out to be sounding like a true story, right? So they were not confused when they were out lying on your on your name and lying about your character and your reputation. So what I want you guys to remember is that they knew exactly what they were doing. They just didn't want you to find out. And they were happy while you, while you were uh, oblivious and you were just unaware of what they were doing. But once you found out what they really did, now they're... They're angry. They're mad because they don't like exposure. You know, that's what the enemy hides from. They're cowards. They're weak. They're cowards. They do something, they throw rocks, and then they run away and they hide their hands. And they're like, and they walk away. 
And once you tell them, did you do it? No, no, I didn't do anything. I, I'm innocent. No, I would never, no. But they're in the dark, right? And they have their hands hidden. And they run, they scatter. So, don't think that they they were that they were innocent and they were just, you know, accidentally talking bad about you. It was all an accident. It was all a misunderstanding. <laughs> it was not a misunderstanding. So, ask them, were you confused when you were plotting and scheming, manipulating me? No, they weren't confused. They saw things very clearly. Yep, gaslighting, then they gaslight you, uh-huh. And that's wicked. That's wickedness right there. An evil tongue, a venomous poison, throwing poison in, in your, into, into. Evil ones steal, destroy, and kill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they tried to stop you. They tried to block you. They tried to um, to make you feel like you didn't doubt yourself, you know? Make you question who you really were. Because they didn't want you to know who you were. They knew who you were. And they feared the day that you would finally realize who you really are. And that's why they painted you out to be this horrible person. Because they needed you to be small so you can so you can bless them and benefit them. Mhm. Mm and now that you finally woke up, you finally notice that wow, I didn't need them. And you start seeing them for who they are and you start saying like, wow, they had nothing to offer me but lies and manipulation. And hurt. That's all they had to offer me. And this is what I was begging for. The bare minimum. Oh no. No. No, we don't deserve to be begging for the bare minimum. When we have so much to offer. No. Not at all. So yeah, these people had seducing spirits. They seduced us with their sweet words. But I don't see them anymore. <laughs> they disappeared now, but... Our enemies are weak and ignorant of their ways. When they have unclean hands, spirits, the curse is automatically on them and everyone they love and hate. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes, chosen ones must be with other chosen ones. Mm hmm. I mean, we can be with, with you know. Um, non-chosen ones, but the only difference is they have to, um, come towards us with respect and, um, with, with hospitality. Like, I'm not asking, like, um, they have to treat us like royalty or no, no, they just have to treat us right.
but there's not a lot of those people left. I mean, they can change, they can change, trust me, they can change. So, I believe some of them are, are able to change. They're not as bad, they're just being misled by Satan. And hopefully they, they, they hit the point where they realize where they went wrong and where they need to change and heal. Because until they don't heal, they're going to keep hitting the same. They're going to keep hitting the same wall over and over again when they drive. But just remember that the Holy Spirit will always give you the wisdom that you need. And you already have it. So use it for good. And you have all the knowledge as well. To get through. Anything, really. But, you know, the devil, he uses these people to get to you, right? And they have all these tactics, right? These predictable tactics that they utilize. They thought that they were going to work against you and your purpose. And try to make you out to be something that you're not and change who you are. So you can stay in the darkness. The devil thought that they had you where they wanted you. But here is the thing that we have to remind ourselves. God has us here because he needs us to be here. And he put us through that situation because he knows what he's doing at all times. We have to trust him. It was a lesson. But that lesson gave us uh, like testimony. Not only testimony, but it really elevated our spirit rapidly. All the setbacks. It was like setbacks. And then we launched up. Boom. So... And remember that you're never alone in anything. You know, although people may leave you in the physical realm, like physically leave you, right? Jesus is always walking by you in the spiritual realm.
And for a second, they thought they had won. They really thought that what they were doing was win, like they, it was working. They really thought that all the harassment, all the stalking, all the um, cursing your name and cursing your life and everything, and you know, working through the outside, through the inside of you, mocking you and you being in the middle of everyone around your community and them just mocking you and trying to put you down and being the negative talk of the town, they thought that they were winning. Like, yeah, we won. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, whatever I did, let's go check up on them and see how they're doing and ask them, hey, how are you doing? To see if that spiritual, that witchcraft worked against them. That's what they were doing. That's why we have to let them go because they know exactly what they were up to. They know that what they were doing was fraudulent. And it was shady and it was uncalled for. There was no reason to do that towards you. No reason at all. It all had to do with their own issues, with their own messy lives, with their own karma and their own misery and their own self-defeat and their self-sabotage towards themselves. And they tried to take it out on us. So they thought they ain't going to go nowhere. They ain't, there are not going to be nobody just like me. They wanted you to be just like them with the same mentality, with the same self-esteem because they saw your confidence and they said, who does that, who does they, who do they think they are? Who does he think he is being so confident? He thinks he's better than us, right? Well, we're going to stop them. We're going to, do something so we know that that he can't surpass all, all of us because people love you when you're all the same but as soon as you start being better that's when it becomes a problem and god was looking god witnessed each and every single person because why because god knows what's in every person's heart he knows he knows what people think in their mind and what people carry in their hearts. And so he was very disappointed. And he couldn't take it anymore. So he had to get you out. He's like, that's enough. I'm getting you out of the situation. Come on, you're mine. You're not theirs. Come on, you belong to me. I'm putting you in a hiding season now where they won't be able to even get close to you. They won't have any access to you. I'm going to remove you. I'm going to put you. I'm going to hide you. You're his hidden treasure. And they were foul. The whole gang stalking is foul. It's spiritual warfare. The whole laughing at you, judging you, mocking you, lying, assassinating, fal falsely accusing you of things. So what you needed to do is you needed to finally surrender. You needed to surrender your all, your whole soul. And you just needed to see things clearly now for what it really was. You need to say, I see right through these people now. Nothing is getting by anymore. And it's hurtful. You know, this narrow road is tough because you're going to see a lot of things. You, a lot of people are going to walk out that you never thought that they would ever leave your life. Like certain people that you really trusted, certain people that you would call for and you would share your hidden um, deepest secrets or, you know, your personal information, your personal life. And you would share it with that person. And they ended up... Um, going against you as if they don't know you for who you really are. 
it. So you need to surrender and you need to see right through these people. And God needed you to go through all of this. God needed you to wake up and to realize what was really going on. In order for God to bless you, he needed to make sure that everything that didn't belong in your life was removed for him to bless you. Because you were going to be blessed and God didn't want you to be around the wrong people. Sometimes God will only bless you alone. That's why it's important to keep your blessings to yourself. Because some things are only spoken between you and God. It's only a one conference, right? It's only a conference for you and God to talk to each other. And no one else is invited. So God cleared the skies and he finally said that the storm is over. You learned the most difficult, excruciating, painful lessons in your life that anyone has ever gone through. And your enemies witnessed a miracle. It's a miracle. I really say it's a miracle. You're a miracle. Because for you to go through all that against so many people speaks volumes. Not only volumes, but it speaks, it speaks the anointing over your life, the protection over your life the protection that you that God guards you with you're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ and no weapon formed the testimonies you're living proof of this you weren't supposed to even make it out because now you have the ability to talk about what you went through and share your te your living testimony and how you got delivered. You know how powerful that is? Wow. So what will God bless you with? Peace prosperity, abundance, positivity. This is what God wants for you right now and moving forward. He wants all of these things that I've just mentioned. He wants you to be at peace. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be abundant. He wants you to be positive, happy. And there's always going to be good and bad times in life because that's just part of life. But he wants to deliver you now with the fruits of your labor, the dedication, the trust, the courage that you had. And they were wrong about you the whole time. They were wrong.
Do you believe we are in our last days? I do believe that, yes. I really do believe that. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to get right with everyone. That's why Satan knows that his time is running short, because he's aware. And he's trying to take down as many people as he can to hell with, with and And I want you to always remember that those people had you looking like a mess with everything that they did to you. <laughs> and you got through all of it. <laughs> so <laughs> you now don't look like what you've been through once you removed all that, all those people that didn't belong in your life. Now you're glowing. Now you're really stepping into your power. Now you're really stepping into love. Because you don't have any hateful spirits. But when you were with them, <laughs> they had you looking a mess. They had you all sorts of messed up. Thinking that you 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 deserved it, thinking that you that you couldn't even look good for yourself because you were just concerned about your own livelihood your soul but now that you got through that you don't look like what you've been through and i don't want any of you guys to go through any of that ever again so i'm telling you let them go let it be it is what it is don't take them back you're going to god is going to be so disappointed in you if you take those people back knowing that he showed you he revealed to you who they are and he told you look it you see why i don't want this person in your life they keep hurting you over and over again they keep hurting you over and over again they keep throwing knives in your back and you're you keep taking them back when are you going to let it go let it go. It's like somebody holding onto a rope and their hand is bleeding. And God is telling them, let go. It's harming you. It's hurting you. Why are you holding on to something that is just hurting you? Breaking your spirit down. That's what they were doing, breaking your spirit down. They had a dark cloud on their heads and they wanted you to have that same dark cloud over your head. And that whole big old black cloud, they wanted to just, you know, no, we don't need to do that. Thank you guys all for sharing your beautiful words and of wisdom. Each one of you. <laughs> but 
Some people are battling demons that only God knows. And So, it was a true blessing that you overcame everything that was sent to destroy you. It's a blessing in itself. All the madness, all the trickery, the deceiving, everything, all the schemes, the plotting of your enemy worked for you. They worked all in your favor. They worked all in your favor. You don't see it right now, but it worked all in your favor. So, God will bless you in front of all your enemies for them to see who you are and who they are. Um, so, I need you to be happy because God delivered you. He has freed you. <laughs> You're technically free. And all of them look like fools now. They look like fools. They're ashamed because they have nowhere to hide and nowhere to run to because of what they have done. They can't even hide from themselves. And I'm being factual with this. They can't hide from themselves. They can't hide from the truth. And every time they see you, it reminds them of, of the person that they are for what they did to you. And that is a painful realization. It really is. Having to lie so hard on someone just to end up being in the same situation that you, you're in and them just rising even farther away from above you that's embarrassing that's an embarrassment on their part and I'm just thinking to myself how long did they think that their game was going to work how long did they think that their game was actually going to help them win in life how can you win a game in life that isn't even real to begin with. It's based off of fictitious lies. It's based off of fiction. <laughs> Especially reality will always be reality. The truth is the truth. And you can't lie about the truth. You can't hide the sun with a finger like that. The sun is still going to shine very bright. This goes for some of them. <laughs> Not all of them, but some of them, yes. They're angry. Because they're too prideful to accept that they lost. And they still want to fight a battle that they already lost. And that they'll continue to lose. They can't continue to fight against you. Knowing that every time they come against you. They're going to lose. And 
and they can stay mad all they want. Let them stay mad. That's their problem now. It's not your problem to fix their temper, anger problems. But their game is over. You play, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And you know what happened is that they started saying a lie and then they forgot about the lie that they said. <laughs> and they continue to add even more lies. And the story eventually was all over the place. And then they would say, oh, I thought you said this about her. Oh, yeah, 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 but this and that. Oh, yeah, yeah, but but no, this and that. Oh, but I thought you said that that they were such a horrible, bad person. No, no, I didn't say that. I meant to say that they were actually this way or that way. Oh, that doesn't make sense. It's not it's not adding up, you know. The storyline is there's a lot of missing pieces to this. And eventually people are catching on. Wait a minute. That's not the truth. <laughs> and that's how they got exposed. <laughs> because even they couldn't they couldn't keep up with their own lies. <laughs> <laughs> they can't keep up with their own lies and they eventually they forgot what they were saying and that's why everybody knows who they are and who you are you know they know who was gossiping because so many people were gossiping saying a bunch of different things <laughs> You know what happens when one person carries a gossip, they carry to the other person? Then that person projects their emotions and their feelings into that information. And they twist it around and they add a little bit more, right? They add a little bit extra more information. And then that information gets carried on to another person. And then that other person adds a little bit extra and they lie and they take certain parts off to make it sound however they want to make it sound like. And then they send it to another person. And eventually a lie starts off with a storyline and then it ends up being a whole different entire, entire story. <laughs> and that's the thing about liars. They're eventually going to get caught. Because when it's time to pay, they don't even know how much they have to pay from all the gaslighting they've been doing. So yeah, so everyone knows who was gossiping, who was saying what about who, and mm -hmm. They try to make a fool out of you, and now they made a fool out of themselves. So what I'm saying is that they tried to put you in a situation. That you weren't supposed to be in a bad situation. And try to make you out to be a fool. And they all ended up being fools themselves. And they said you were crazy and now look at who's crazier. <laughs> wow.
So all they did was create an audience for you. Create an audience for you. Mm hmm. So, at the end of the day, you need to be glad and you need to rejoice. You really do. Rejoice and be glad at how far he got you. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be here standing. Literally. Literally. He got you this far. So for that reason, don't harbor any hate and forgive these people. Forgive them. Really, don't harbor any hate. You already got this far. You don't need to hate. Then you're going to lower yourself down. No. So... So I really hope this message helped you guys because oh, I was a little bit all over the place. TD, let's see. Christ preached tribulation for the church. Cannot expect the good life. Yet we can have peace in our hearts even if there is a storm raging outside around us. We have to be in the world, in the world, not of the world. Beautifully said. Mm hmm Yes, we have to endure. We have to carry the cross in order to be saved. I pray to God to help me outsmart them all. Exactly, Samaya. We don't have the energy to hate. Exactly. That's too... That's just... No, it's not in us. Jesus said there would be tribulation, but fear not, he overcomes them all. Living examples of the love of Christ who died for his enemies, we cannot expect to be treated any better because when the war against the saints ramps up, by the evil ones. Mm hmm. Very true. Yep. That's why we need to be um, vigilant, discerning of the um, the sneaky ways of the enemy. Oh, that enemy can be sneaky. Sneaky, I tell you, sneaky in his ways, deceptive. So, it's good to know. Your enemies will spy on your conversation and will be revealed in the dream. Oh, yes. But you know the enemy has limited information. Limited information. The enemy can't really... Um, take, take away much personal information about you. He has limited information. Be 
because God a lot intends it that way. That's why they can't figure you out. That's why they have to gain, you know, information about the physical. Because they, they see things through the fleshly, um, carnal, carnal ways. So that's why they ask. They want, like, just, like, your family history, stuff like that. But what they don't know that it's all spiritual. <laughs> that's why they can't figure you out. Because the light, they can't understand the light. I think there's a Bible verse that says that, you know, like, some people will see your light and they know that it comes from God. Other people will see your light and they will not understand your light. And they'll despise your light. Something like that. But, yes, yeah, very true, you know. So, yeah, the enemy has limited it limited access to you actually he has no access to you he has no authority in your life you're the one with the authority you have the authority to rebuke these demons out of your life it's only if you allow them and you open a portal and you open a door to them whenever you fall into sin or you fall into temptation or you end up doing something that God doesn't want you to do like having a certain person in your life that doesn't belong there and yeah then you do allow the enemy to try to destroy you you know even your family friends could be the ones who want to destroy you and who want to try to you know i don't know like you just got to be careful it's not a game out here it's spiritual warfare And God wants you to, to protect yourself. That's why you have certain, that's why you have the Bible, that's why you have the Word. That's why you have certain um, ways to combat, to battle against spiritual warfare. And you know, the more you don't let the enemy in your life, the less the enemy will be able to affect you. Because they'll try, they'll try to squeeze themselves, they'll try to find a way like a snake to get in. But as long as you keep that door closed and God closes that door on, on you, really, God will close that door. He's like, don't open that door again. I warned you already. Don't open that door. And you open that door. Thinking, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, nothing, nothing will happen. You know, I can handle them. <laughs> you let them in your life, they're going to cause some kibber. They're going to wreak havoc in your life. So close that door. You know, close those doors that God closed already. God, you know, God will open the doors that he, he intends you to go in, okay? Because, look it, even I had a job interview and the energy was off, you know? God already showed me that something was off. So that door was closed automatically. He already showed me like, no, nope, something's not right. Get out, you know, leave, don't go, don't go back. Close that door continued like going through different avenues right the right door open and that's just how you have to go through life you know always make sure that your spirit aligns with the spirit of other people as well you know your spirit has to align with their spirit 
if it's misaligned, then it's gonna clash. It's gonna clash. It's really gonna be like clashing. Like you're gonna have like a bunch of clashes, right? Because your spirits are not aligned. So, yeah, there's different spirits. Yes, there is. There's spirit of jealousy. There's a Jezebel spirit. There's marine spirits. There's familiar spirits. That's what I mean by familiar spirits. You know, we're familiar to certain spirits that are not good for us. We know that um, the harm, you know, we know that, but they're familiar to us. And so we have a hard time letting go of familiar things in our lives. But we have to, we have to, we have to do this in the name of God. He wants us to do that. He wants us to let go of anything familiar. He wants us to step into the unknown. He wants us to be fearless, to let go of fear and you know, take a risk wherever he's trying to, to lead you towards. I know sometimes he needs you to make a drastic change in your life. You know, move a new location, start new, flee to a new area, new city. People are, some people are seasonal, some people are temporary, some people are only in a short time of your life to teach you something. And then once you learn, you move on. And you continue moving on. But some people will be a lifetime. Some people will last longer in your life. So. Yep. Just keep. Keep marching. Keep fighting that good fight. Okay. Keep fighting that good fight. Alright. Thank you, John Park. You said that beautifully. But being a chosen one, it is imperative that we remain in our own company most of the time. We are not here to waste our time and energy on toxic and superficial relationships. Thank you. Very well said. Mm hmm. But take risk. Take risk. And, you know, you know, here's the thing. People have different destinies to live. Some people want to stay in the box, right? And we're over here trying to enforce them, trying to make them see things the way we see it. And they don't won't. They won't. They don't have the ability to. They don't have the same vision that God has given us. <laughs> and we're trying to show people our vision, right? And they don't understand it. They're like, I don't get it. Like, but that's why it's only your vision. You know, your life. And some are not going to agree with it. Some people are going to want to tell you, no, 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 don't do that. No, don't do that. Do this instead. But it's, it's a vision, you know. God gives you a vision. And we just have to stop, you know, trying to take everyone with us. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> yeah, we really do, you know. We can't force anyone to stay in our life that doesn't want to stay. We can't force anyone to change when they really don't want to change their ways. They, they're comfortable. They actually like being in the dark, you know. Um... There's only so much we, one can do. At least we gave him a prophetic word. We shared our wisdom. We shared the message that God wanted us to share with them. And we move on. We let God handle the rest. Because then we're going to get cursed if we keep them in our life. You know, some people are cursed. And I know that sounds harsh. But um, like generational curses... It's a it's a chain of demons, to be honest. It's a chain of demonic uh, spirits fleeing from family to family member. And, you know, sometimes most people come from a demonic household, you know? Like, there's a lot of bad wickedness and evilness 
and things that one witnesses in families or friends. And they pass it on to their kids, the demons, and then, yeah, it's like a chain reaction. So, um, once you escape, that's why you get all this spiritual attacks heading your way. Because you're doing something that the bloodline no one has ever done in, in your place. And so, yeah, you will get attacked spiritually by your family. You get attacked by Satan itself, the devil, come after you. Like, what do you think you're doing? So... Yeah. Um, so what was my message? Yeah, you know, some people are cursed, so that's why we have to really know what we're dealing with. Because we really don't know. Like narcissists, psychopaths, sociopaths, cursed. You're gonna get cursed. You're gonna be fall. You're gonna fall under. They're gonna cast a spell under you, and you're gonna fall into that curse. So, just be aware. That's why it's important to marry the right person. That's why it's important to um, have the right type of people in your life. Because there's a lot of seducing spirits. You know they're. They sound sweet to your ears. They sound sweet. Sweet words. So many spirits that we must cast out. We aren't perfect, but please get rid of as much as familiar spirits of people, places, and things. Renew your mind. Very true. Mm-hmm. Very well said. I became estranged from my family. They tore us apart. Yep, it's Satan working through there, causing division. It's divide and conquer. That's what it is. You know, it's all, it's been like that. That's what spiritual warfare is. Um, divide and conquer. With the devil, so yeah. A sanctioned walk is painful. It is hard. It can be lonely. However, when you pray, they will be done. You allow God to use you fully in the spiritual war. We are against Babylon, but Jesus won already. Exactly. Thank you, TD. You're right. When I was, you know, going through spiritual warfare, I got out my Bible and I just read really loud. And wow, it's like a mirror. It's not only a miracle, but it's like a, it's the best feeling ever i can't explain it. it's unexplainable but it's power it's beautiful it's not only powerful but it's like i don't know how to explain it's something else but the emotion is like once you wake up after you're done reading the bible you feel so free happy and you feel so um alive like you really feel alive like you're not just living you're actually you actually feel alive uplifted thank you that's a great word yes uplifted praying without seizing mm -hmm. that's the word i was looking for uplifted Yeah, so always pray. Um, always invite God into your life. Close the doors, close portals on anything that's not serving God and your purpose, please. And um, continue to be yourselves no matter what. Don't let anyone take the best of you. Remember, blessed are the peacemakers, not the persecutors. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Alright, I'm going to go ahead and end this live because it's already been an hour. But thank you guys so much for joining this um, live stream. And I hope this message helped anyone who needed this message. And um, continue to be yourselves. Continue to stay true to who you are. And continue to share that beautiful light with the world. Alright. Have a good night. And God bless each one of you. And I love each one of you as well. Alright. Bye.